ル島とかのことを YouTube で話してた YouTuber だったっていうに後で気づきました<笑> So, when I actually went to the bathroom right before the panel yesterday, I thought I recognized the dude that was next to me. And, you know, it came to me afterwards last night that he was actually someone who had talked about Naruto on YouTube. He was a YouTuber. And, you know, it never even crossed my mind back when I saw the YouTube that I'd ever run across this person. So, A lot? Wait, wait, hold on. So, a lot yeah, of my videos? Like, here's the funny thing about that. Not even my own family can say that they've watched my videos a lot. You see how that works? You see how that makes sense? It means that Kishimoto, in a way, Is my real family. Those were just little sections of an interview that Kishimoto did. I'll leave the link of the full interview in the description. He starts talking about me at, at the 15 minute mark or so, so you can look that up. And then、uh, if you can't access that interview, I'll leave a link to like another YouTube video that's kind of like the same thing where he talks about me. Now you can only imagine how excited and just baffled and shocked I was with the fact that he recognized me. This has been by far. The most flattering. The, the author of Naruto, a series that shaped and changed my life, recognized me. It's the most flattering experience I've ever had. And it happened in the least flattering of places. I'm wearing a new shirt because it's a new day, because I recorded that yesterday, because I didn't have enough time to finish the video yesterday. Now, there's a couple of very important things that I need to say, because people have been asking me, like, Oh, like, did you hear about this? Or, like, what is your reaction? Like, how are you feeling? And the best way that I can sort of encompass how I feel is by telling you some, some very quick stories. The first is about how I got into Naruto in the first place. I got into Naruto when I was a college freshman, okay? And I was living in a very shitty small apartment, all right? Very cheap. We were very, very bad living conditions. We had like cockroaches and shit. And I say we because I was sharing that apartment with my sister at the time. Now, during that, that year, that first year of, of college, I, I guess I could, you could say that I, I wasn't really socially active. Like, I would just be like, ah,、uh, you know, I would, I would have friends and talk to them. But whenever I, I would get invited to parties, I wouldn't go because I wasn't interested in drinking alcohol and I wanted to set a good example for my sister and I didn't want to come home drunk or like, you know, that sort of stuff. Now, that doesn't mean that. Right now, I, I, I drink very, very moderately socially.、Uh, and it doesn't mean that I've never gotten drunk, but that's, that's the me of back then. So when it was the weekends, I would just do my homework and then just turn on the TV.、Um, and one of, one of those nights, as I was like channel surfing and stuff,、uh, this, this fight caught my attention on Cartoon Network. And it was the fight of the Valley of the End. And I just I saw Naruto just trying his hardest to beat the living shit out of Sasuke. And I remember Naruto would constantly say to Sasuke, I'm doing this because you're my friend. This is because you're my friend. So to me, as somebody who didn't know the series, that made absolutely no fucking sense. Because it's like, how can you say, how can you straight up say that this guy is your friend when you're straight up trying to kill each other? And then later I find out that it's because he wants to stop his friend from committing a horrible mistake. He wanted to save his friend by breaking his neck, essentially. No, but,、um, but that's how I got into Naruto. You know, that, that fight just. That was the hook. Now, the second part of this is how I got into doing weekly reviews, okay?、Um, now, if you ask me this, for the most part, I'll probably just brush the question off and be like, oh, you know, I was just a guy with a lot of opinions and I had a camera. So, I was bored and I, did, I started doing them. But if I, if I go in a little deeper in terms of like re, what really motivated me, 
I had already made some some videos that were Naruto related, but they weren't like chapter reviews. Like they were, like there was this one reaction to the to the chapter where Naruto goes when he gets pissed off when Pain stabs Hinata and some other other type of videos. But I wasn't doing weekly reviews. The weekly reviews for me started when I I started taking a, a creative writing class um, in school, and I remember this professor. Like we we would have reading assignments and we would talk about the stories or the stuff that we would read in the following class. And I remember this professor, I think I said something to him that he didn't really like the first day of class. And so when after that, when it was time for everybody to share their opinions about the stuff that we had read, he would either skip me, like even though I raised my hand, like he would either pretend that I wasn't there or he would just straight up invalidate my opinion. So when I had something to say, he would either like, make me look stupid in front of the class or after like I, I you know I would I would talk and then give my points he would just be like huh interesting and then he would just turn to the other person like not commenting on anything I had to say so I felt really like invalidated and I felt like I didn't have a voice and I remember that class was on Wednesdays and back in the day the Naruto chapters would come out on Wednesdays so I felt really frustrated because I was I would I would come home feeling like, shit, like I, I felt like I had something to say and I didn't get to say it. And people, you know, well, or I did get to say it and I looked like an idiot, right? So that's what motivated me into like reading the chapter of Naruto and turning on my camera and saying, this is what I have to say about this chapter. I hope you can listen to this. So even though my opinions weren't really like appreciated or, you know, taken into consideration in class, I, I always deep down, even during class, I could think to myself, I, well, I can still talk about Naruto. And then little by little, you guys started coming in and, you know, that's what made the channel. So Kishimoto, I don't know if you're watching this or will ever watch this. And honestly, I don't know how you would understand what I'm saying unless you have like a translator right next to you or you, you know, somehow, maybe you can just understand English and you can't speak it. I think that's a very common occurrence amongst people that, you know, no other languages. Maybe you turn on like the closed captions and you get like the subtitles here on the YouTube video. I don't know, but I really do want to say thank you. And not just thank you on behalf of myself, but thank you like on behalf of like the thousands upon thousands of people that have read and know of your work. And I've met some of them, like I know some of them because of the videos that I've done and how I went to the Comic Con and I've met people there and like people dressing up and sh it's crazy. So on behalf of those people, I thank you. Whether they ended up liking the story or not, that's always gonna be up in the air. But I do think there's a part of every single one of us that at least has encountered your work that to a certain degree is thankful for what you did. So that's what I wanted to say. I also want to thank you on behalf of that kid that had nothing else to do as a freshman during the weekends than watch TV because you gave him a show that he could get into. And I also want to thank you on behalf of that kid that was sitting in that creative writing class that couldn't open his mouth because he felt like crap because he felt that his opinions didn't matter. You gave that kid something to talk about. And now here I am. You know, it's like how many people can say that they went to Comic-Con and met Kishimoto, the first time Kishimoto has ever been in America, and they meet him in the bathroom. And not only that, they get kicked out of the bathroom, but Kishimoto ends up recognizing them. And listen, I don't know if I'm right or wrong about this, but I really do think that a big part of why things ended up working out the way they did was because I was doing this for other people. I wasn't really thinking about myself all that much. So if I could leave you with anything, any, any you know, bit of advice is to take care of yourself, pay attention to yourself, your needs, your wants, and then after, really try and do something for other people. That's, that's all I can offer you. Unless other people are, you know, assholes, then that doesn't make yourself happy, so you can't make other people happy. You see how that works? This has been an incredible fucking experience. Uh, arigato. Kishimoto Sensei, thank you all for everything you do. Thumbs up, commenting, subscribing. I, I cannot say with words. I can't utter an explanation. I can't give you a description of how amazing you guys have made my life. Thank you. So I was able to get Kishimoto's autograph, right? You know what's coming up next? Who's going to be coming to New York in like seven years?
You bet your ass I'm going to be there, buddy boy. I'll take a urinal. <laughs>